Welcome back to Light Tech. I'm Jim Jansen, and we're continuing our Expressway series, the deployment and basic configurations. This is part five, the live DNS demonstration. So come along with me as we configure Light Tech. Today we're going to demonstrate how we deploy those DNS records for MRA. On the previous video we discussed the different methods of DNS records and we decided that we're going to follow Cisco best practice which is a single domain with split brain DNS. As you recall split brain DNS refers to you having an internal DNS server with the same domain as your external DNS server has. In my situation, I'm calling my DNS zones like TAC on the internal DNS and on my external DNS. So if we go to my Expressway C and go under System and DNS, we pre-configured the host name as Expressway C and the domain is like TAC.com. You can add additional search domains if it's not the same as like TAC.com. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. We see that we have the IP address for the Microsoft DNS server and a per domain DNS server lookup. You don't need this right here if you're using the same domain. If we go to the Expressway E, System, DNS, we see here that the host name is Expressway E. The domain also is liketac.com and we see our Microsoft DNS server IP address. So we see that both Expressway C and Expressway E are in the like TAC domain. Now that we've seen that our Expressway C and E have a domain of liketac.com for both servers, we're going to look at the external DNS servers to see what records we have deployed for DNS. My liketac.com domain is being hosted by Hover. Hover has some name servers uh, that I can put DNS records out there on the internet to be advertised to the world. The most important uh, record we have for MRA is going to be this SRV record called underscore collab dash edge dot underscore TLS. Let's look at that record for a moment. So we see the host name is the SRV record collab dash edge dot underscore TLS and Assume that's under the liketac.com. That's why we don't have the extra portion there. It's right here. It's assumed. So we have a priority of 10. We have a weight of 10. And the listening port on Expressway E is 8443. That means all my clients like Jabber or WebEx app or the IP phone are going to send all their GET API messages via HTTP to this port. The target for all those requests is expresswaye.liketac.com. If we look at our DNS server here on the external, we see that we have a target expresswaye. If we look at that A record, we see that the host name is expresswaye. Again, liketac.com is the domain. And the public IP for expresswaye that I'm sending all my GET API messages on port 8443 is 45.20.214.1 and I gave it a TTL of 24 hours so their PCs don't or applications don't have to look up that DNS again for another 24 hours. One thing I'd like to note is that some people will put their SRV record in like tac.org for instance but their A record is still in the lightac.com domain. So this is going to cause a problem when you actually try to 
do DNS lookups from the application, the operating system is going to complain. It's going to say the server name identifier, which is the how you configured Expressway E in DNS. As we saw earlier, it said it was Expressway E in the LikeTac.com domain. When the certificate is presented, when the DNS of that server is presented to the uh, operating system, it's going to say, hey, LikeTac.com is what your server is calling itself, but you are sending us a record of LikeTac.org. That's going to be a conflict. And so you'll get a SNI or server name identifier error, TLS errors, things like that. So we want to keep our collab edge record and A records in the same domain if, whenever possible. If we do need to be in different domains, then make sure that the different domain is added as a SAN to your certificate, and we'll see that later. So if your Expressway is actually configured with uh, expressway.e.liketac.com, and you're doing .org or you're doing something else, then make sure expressway.e.liketac.org is on your SAN or your certificate so there won't be any server name identifier conflicts. Another consideration when deploying external DNS records is I have a cluster of six Expressway E's. So one Collab Edge record is not going to suit our deployment. In this case, we'll need six Collab Edge records and we'll need six A records in order for us to discover all our servers that we can possibly connect to. If we look at the S V record again, we see that we have options here. We have the priority option. We have a wait option. It's never going to change the port setting because we're always connecting to 8443 in our expressways. And then our server name is going to change too because we have six different A records. So this uh, target will be different. But you'll have six collab edge records. Now, how do we determine which collab edge record will be used first, second, third? How are we going to deploy this on the external DNS so that our clients are load balancing, going to the right expressway E that we want them to go to. Those are some of the considerations we have for this. Let's deployment. stop right here and take a look at SRV load balancing for DNS so that we understand clearly if we want to add more collab edge records for multiple machines, how that's going to work. Provisioning for high service availability. The priority field determines the precedence use of the records data. Clients should use the SRV records with the lowest numbered priority first and fall back to records of higher value if the connection fails. If a service has multiple SRV records with the same priority value, clients should load balance them in proportion to their values of their weight fields. In the following example, both the priority and the weight fields are used to provide a combination of load balancing and backup services. You can see our four records here is Expressway E, Expressway E2, Expressway E3, Expressway E4 with different priorities in weight. The first three records share a priority of 10. So the weights field will be used by the clients to determine which server host port combination to contact. The sum of all three values is 100, so 20, 20, and 60 is 100. So expresswaye.liketac.com will be used 60% of the time. The two host servers, Expressway E2 and Expressway E3, will be used 40% of the request total, with half of them sent to Expressway E2 and the other half sent to Expressway E3. If Expressway E is unavailable, these two remaining machines, that means Expressway E2 and Expressway E3, will be used 50% of the time. If all three servers with priority 10 are unavailable, the record with the next lowest priority value will be chosen, which is expresswayE4.liketac.com. This might be a machine in another physical location, presumably not vulnerable to anything that would have caused the first three hosts become unavailable. For instance, maybe you have data center one and they experience some kind of disaster, a hurricane or flood, or the service provider cut the router uh, service to that data center. Where Expressway E4 is in another data center, 
that would not succumb to these weather events or the cutting of a router. The load balancing provided by SRB records is inherently limited since the information is essentially static. Current load of servers is not taken into account unless the TTL values are low enough, around a minute or lower, that the priority or weight values can be quickly updated. In the situation with Jabber clients, WebEx app, and phones, you may even have to reset the, the phone or the Jabber client or the WebEx client so that it can rediscover its SRV now records. Now we have an understanding on how the SRV records can be utilized to load balance clients' requests to one data center or a second data center. We're going to go ahead and update our DNS records on the external DNS server. You can see I've already updated the Expressway E target with the weight of 60 so that 60% of the time I'm going to that server. So let's go ahead and add some more records. Let's go add the other SRV records. So I'm going to add a record. I'm going to call it SRV is the type. The host name is going to be the Collab Edge record. The priority is going to be 10. The weight we said on the other two servers is going to be 20, and 48443 is still the same. And the target server is Expressway E2, lightac.com. And I'm adding the record. I'm going to add another SRV record. It's another. And the host name for that one is going to be again Collab Edge because we're using a Collab Edge record. Priority 10, because there's three servers that are going to have the priority 10. The weight on this one, again, is 20. 8443 is my port. And this is going to be my Expressway E3 server at lightpack.com. I'm adding the record. And then we're going to add our fourth record that has the backup for us, right? It's on a second data center. So we say SRV record. The host, again, is Collab Edge. Priority on this one now is 20. It's worse than the, the priority of 10. So it's those other three, ten, three servers are, have a priority of 10. They're load balancing. Zero is the weight. There's no other servers there. 8443 is my port. And Expressway E4 is what this one's going to have a target of. And so I put Expressway E4 as my target. Now I have all my SRV records. Now the, the first one called Expressway E has that weight of 60, 60% 60 of the time I'm going to that server for requests. The other 40% of the time users are going to get load bounds between the Expressway E2 and E3 because they have the priority of 20, I mean the weight of 20 on each one of them. If this server went down for instance, then the load balancing would be equal between these two. If all three of the priority 10 servers went down, then the SRV record would start pointing them towards this lower weight. Now we don't have any A records yet for these targets. All these targets must have an A record. So I need a, an A record for Expressway E2, E3, and E4. So let's add those records. So it's an A record. The host name is going to be Expressway E2, like TAC.com. The IP address for this server is going to be 45.22.14.2. I just happen to have a static address that ends with 2, so it's kind of convenient that it matches my Expressway E2. Then I'll add another record for E3. Let's say Expressway E3 dot uh, .com. And this time I'm going to have a public IP of 3 since my block has happens to have that last octet that's just very convenient for me that matches my 3 so it kind of reminds me that Expressway E3 has an IP address ending with that 3. And then my last record is for the Expressway E4. And let's look for that and change that from 3 on the host to 4 on the host. And then again my 45.20.214.4 is very convenient again. They match up.
So I have my four A records, I have my four collab edge records, and so my DNS external records should be populating and should be good. Now to verify these external DNS records that I just published in Hoover's DNS servers. So let's go to Collaboration Solution Analyzer and let's put my domain in there for like pack. Likepack.com. Let's discover the records. It'll take a minute for them to do that. It's a tool that's going to go out, do some DNS queries. It's going to uh, try to connect to your network with a TCP connection and verify what certificates you have there and if the tunnel is up on those TCP ports. Okay, we got some results now. So we see we have the Collab Edge record advertised on the DNS for the internet. And I see that all my targets are listed there, especially e -like pack, number two, number three, and number four. If I look at my priorities, expressway E, E2, E3 have a priority of 10. As we stated, they're gonna round robin between these. And 60% of the time, they're gonna go to this expressway E. The other 40% of the time, they're gonna go between expressway E2 and expressway E3 so that they are low bounds. If this server was down for some reason, then the low balancing would be between two and three equally. If all three of the tens were down, then expressway.e.likepack.com would uh, come into play because he has a priority of 20 and it would fall back to that. We notice that the port 8443, that is the listening port on the expressway E is red for me right now. That's because my tunnels are down and I do not have any TLS certificates on my edge. On the tool here, we also see that it did some Cisco UDS queries and cup login queries for the SRV records. And it says green and it's not resolvable. And that's a good thing because UDS records and cup login records should only exist on your internal network, not on the internet, because there's no way to actually point to the call managers from the internet or the CUP servers. And I look at my TCP connections. It says, hey, these are the public IPs you had for each of these servers. These are the ports that they're listening to. None of my ports are in the green right now because currently there's no certificate, there's no tunnel up. There are more advanced DNS queries that can be configured. One's called GeoDNS. Uh, that will be saved for another more advanced video. The other video that I would consider publishing is a, adaptive routing, the WebEx clients and the Jabber clients that connect over MRA can detect when an expressway is down or a call manager is down and react to that. And how the DNS is deployed for those servers would make a difference on how you plan out your DNS records but those are for another time, another video. I hope this has been informative for you and please subscribe to LikePack.